Welcome to the gallery at Lakeland Community College. Lakeland Community College is located on Route 306, just south of the I-90 interchange. The gallery is located in building D as in dog. This is the exhibition called Dreams and Visions, Surrealism and Fantasy Art that I curated. My name is Mary Irvis. I'm the gallery director and the exhibition curator here at Lakeland. So we're gonna do a video walkthrough of the show and show you some incredible things. This first piece is Scott Allen Evans. He's from Akron, Ohio, Cuyahoga Falls. And then there's two pieces of Carrie Gortz that are flanking Gotti Zamir's wood burn piece with the figure and the owls and the, the birds, the crows. Then there's a piece of Beth Nash's. Oh, right now we're looking at two pieces of Gail Trunick. These are assemblage art found objects and she, used, she found an old baby tram and a little mini bicycle. On the wall in the corner is Beth Nash. Next to her is Matt Kukowski, who is sometimes known as Spare Parts. And then there's a piece by Lonnie McDevitt, and she just recently took a workshop with Michael Demang. This sculpture is another wooden carved piece in pyrography and painted piece by Gadi Zamir. He actually has a studio in, near downtown Cleveland called Negative Space, and he does open mics and he has exhibitions in his gallery. Here's a trio of Beth Nash, Beth Nash's work. Beth teaches in, in Southern Ohio. She used to be a textile artist, now she does these incredible acrylic paintings. The ceramic sculpture, The Merman, is created by Michael W. Hyde, and he incorporates, with the clay, he incorporates some tree roots and birds and some moss in there. We've got an absolutely lovely painting of the bird with wings by D Diane Hepner. Two paintings by Deborah Sue Selecki. Another sculpture by Michael W. High. And a little crow figure ha actually has a, a human face to it. Kind of adds to the whole surrealism part of this because this is the surrealism show. It's about dreams and visions and I'm sure some people might think nightmares also. The piece in the corner is, is created by Gadi Zamir. This large triptych this first piece is Scott Allen Evans. He's from Akron, Ohio, Cuyahoga Falls. And then there's two pieces of Carrie Gortz that are flanking Gadi Zamir's wood burn piece with the figure and the owls and the, the birds, the crows. Then there's a piece of Beth Nash's. Oh, right now we're looking at two pieces of Gail Trunick. These are assemblage art found objects and she, used, she found an old baby tram and a little mini bicycle. On the wall in the corner is Beth Nash. Next to her is Matt Kukowski, who is sometimes known as Spare Parts. And then there's a piece by Lonnie McDevitt, and she just recently took a workshop with Michael Demang. This sculpture is another wooden carved piece in pyrography and painted piece by Gadi Zamir. He actually has a studio in, near downtown Cleveland called Negative Space, and he does open mics and he has exhibitions in his gallery. Here's a trio of Beth Nash, Beth Nash's work. Beth teaches in, in Southern Ohio. She used to be a textile artist, now she does these incredible acrylic paintings. The ceramic sculpture, The Merman, is created by Michael W. Hyde. And he incorporates, with the clay, he incorporates some tree roots and birds and some moss in there. We've got an absolutely lovely painting of the bird with wings by D Diane Hepner. Two paintings by Deborah Sue Selecki. Another sculpture by Michael W. High. 
And a little crow figure ha actually has a, a human face to it. Kind of adds to the whole surrealism part of this. Because this is the surrealism show. It's about dreams and visions and I'm sure some people might think nightmares also. The piece in the corner is, is created by Gadi Zamir. This large triptych was done by my CIA pal, Joe Stavik. Joe and I went to the Institute of Art together and graduated in 1980. And this is a three panel triptych put together. And the piece next to his is a painting by Laurel Herbold. Laurel actually has a studio in the West 78th Street Studios Complex on the west side. And every third Friday, they, their studios are open from 5 to 10 p.m. It's worth the drive over to the west side to go check it out. Here's two more pieces for Blani McDevitt. These are mixed media collage pieces. This next piece is done by Vladimir Avcharov. He's from New Mexico. I actually saw his work last year at the Three Rivers Arts Festival and invited him to give me work, so he dropped work off on his way home to New Mexico last month. We have a tattooed lady called Playing with Dynamite by Douglas Manray. A large painting by Augusto Bordelois. This is an example of, of magical realism. And the piece next to that is another piece by Scott Allen Evans. We have a little South Beach piece called Rapso's Dream, created by Louis Ross. Louis owns a gallery in Waterloo called Article, and the first Friday of the month is the walk all over Waterloo. I invite people to go check out all the galleries that are there. There's a bunch, Praxis and Brick and Waterloo Arts and Maria Neal Project. Jer Gary, um, here's another painting by Augusto Bordelois. Here's a figurative painting called Boxed In by Laurel Herbold. Next, we have a painting by Lysandra Robinson. And then a crazy painting of conjoined twins by Arabella Proffer. For those of you guys who kind of watch what I share on Facebook, you know I love conjoined twins. I'm a twin myself, and there's something about those, those conjoined twins that just intrigues me. I love them. Here's another painting by Laurel Horbold. And next to that is a painting by Daniela Avcharov, and she's obviously the wife of Vladimir. Again, she's another artist from New Mexico. Okay, this is a Forlorn Doll, Samantha Myers. This is her figure. And her husband, Greg, created the chair and upholstered the chair. Then we have an assemblage piece by Terry Klausman. And next to that is a collage by June Hund. Here's three more pieces of spare parts. Matt Kakowski, these are collages. The next to this, you'll see Voodoo Gumbo by George Kokar. You know, it's, it's a very distinctive piece. George has a very distinctive style, and he's one of my favorite artists. And you know I have to have a skull piece in a show this time of year. This is a assemblage piece of the Apocalypto Shrine by Lisa Rushman, in homage to the bees. Then these three pieces are, are an artist, Louis Vuittonette from um, California. He actually sent me this work net last year by mistake for the skull show, but there weren't any skulls in it, so we kept it for this year's show. And then here's our cover girl. This is our poster girl. This is Lori Field from New York State. These are colored pencil on ledger paper. Lori does exquisite work, and she also does encaustic paintings, and I just love her work, and that's why I selected it for this year's postcard.
going to show you a side view of Lisa Rushman's police, and we'll show you the front as we kind of circle around. You're going to see the front of Alice Kitterman's limestone sculpture. And now what we're doing is we're kind of walking around this, the assemblage sculpture of Robert Carpenter. He puts all kinds of crazy things in here. There's pigs that are flying and, and sea urchins and, and little babies with little crystals on their heads. What's not to like? And a corn cob pipe. And then these, this painting is Douglas Manry. And the four pieces in the center is, are done by Len Davis. These are collage graphite on newsprint and panel. He's another California artist. And here's Carnival, an oil on canvas painting by Douglas Manry. And another sculpture by Alice Kitterman. Now we get to the crazy stuff. Here are two pieces by Stephen Patternight. These are some pieces he actually did in the 80s when he received an Ohio Arts Council grant. He's got Primalsaurus Rex, which is kind of like a dinosaur with chicken hands and a baby doll head. And then we've got Kitty Cat, which is a taxidermied cat with a ba baby doll head. And next to it, is a triptych that I created, alert the media. This is a triptych I call Barbecue. It's a digital photograph of, of some of my Barbies, and I do take my Barbies on vacation with me and have photographed them for years. So this is kind of like a little crazy section. And then I added the salt and pepper shaker of Barbie and Ken to kind of add to the, the whole little presentation. And then you're, we're seeing another back version of um, Alice Kitterman's limestone sculpture. And then we're walking up to Lisa Rushman's piece. This is a piece where you kind of have to come see it and put your face inside. I don't think you're gonna be, we're going to be able to tell what's in there, but there's a little skeleton inside of the hole there. So again, Lisa took a, also took a workshop with Michael DeMang, and he's, he's known for doing these crazy things with skeletons. And this is actually a glass mosaic piece that Lisa created. Here's another large scale painting by George Kokar. And we're coming up to a sculpture by Jeremy Tompkins. Okay, at the end is a limestone and glass photo, um, sculpture by Alice Kitterman. And we have two paintings by Lysandra Robinson. And in front of her paintings is an assemblage piece by Gail Crumb. I have another mixed media piece by Robert Carpenter called Cross My Heart. And then next to that is another painting by Deborah Sue Selecki called D Divi Divi or DV DV Disconnect. It's a mixed media piece. We've got Gail Crumb's Timekeeper in front of that. And then we have another piece of D Daniela Avcharov's piece. It's a mixed media piece. Here's another view of Alice Kitterman's limestone and glass sculpture. Then we have four, oh, sorry, three pieces by Bob Walls. These are oil on canvas, Nurse Neutron, Colonel Carbon, and Prince's Palladium. In front of that is a crazy little assemblage mixed media sculpture by Robert Carpenter with a little bunny and there's a little antenna there and it's being pulled by a herd of poodles. <laughs> Next to that is a Prismacolor pencil on, on Arches paper by Terry Klausman. We have a mixed media piece by Lonnie McDevitt.
And then you're going to see this, the, this painting by Matthew Merchant, and then he's got his um, recliner in front of it. It's his commentary on how you look at a TV set in the morning, and there's kind of like nothing on but the static, and the black and blue and white kind of um, pattern design kind of reminded him of the crawl you see in the bottom of your television set. And he actually sat here during the reception with the remote control kind of attached to his arm intravenously as if he's attached to the, the media and has to always listen to what's on. On the wall next to Matt's piece is a collage piece by Gail Crum. And then another Gail's work, in front, these sculptures, these are ceramic with um, found objects. This is Gail Trunick. We have two more collages by June Hund. And then we have four paintings by, by Higo, and what she did is she did variations on her cupcake theme, but one was done as, as Salvador Dali, one of my favorite artists, Gustav Klimt. We have Magritte and Edward Munch. And then in front of those, to kind of accentuate in the, the food theme, are two pieces by Leslie Edwards Hume. These are mixed media pieces. One is a sculpture of a shoe with all kinds of fun ice cream in it and then a, a melting ice cream cone with barbed wire. Here's another mixed media piece by Robert Carpenter. With another pig flying. Pigs flying seem to be a recurring theme for him in this show. Here's another acrylic painting by George Kokar. Okay, we have three prints by Sean Crum. These are etchings, aqua tint, dry point, lift ground, with images of dragons and knights. And in front of that is Robocat. This is another piece of Stephen Patternights. Kind of accentuating the armor theme and the dragon and the dragon slayers. Here's two pieces by Rosh, oops, Ross Bochnik. This is a painting by Katrina Hicks. And we have four pieces by Billy Ritter. Ritter. These are done on porcelain, and it's called The Physical Impossibility of Dreams in the Mind of Someone Sleeping. And left to right is Beta, Alpha, Theta, and Delta. We've got two altered books from Gail Trunick. We love seeing those red dots. I'd love to see some more. That's my favorite phone call to ever make is to call an artist and let them know that we sold their work. So thank you for everybody that supports the gallery. Here's a piece by Deborah Sue Selecki. Another crazy eyeball piece by Katrina Hicks with, with its, a, skull, a skull head and a crow and a key. This is an oil painting by Vladimir Avcharov, my, our, New, um, our New Mexico artist. Then we have four pieces by Steve Arrett. He's from Columbus. And this first painting is kind of crazy because he's got these monsters with these little baby teeth that just make me crazy. There's something about, something very terrifying about a, a monster with little teeth kind of going after you, kind of chomp on you, trying to chew you up. There's two of his India ink on watercolor paper drawings. And then another fantasy landscape. And what would, what would complete a show about dreams and visions and nightmare, but a painting with clowns by Joe Stavik. 
And you know, you know how people feel about clowns. They either love them or they hate them. There's a sculpture by Leslie who made. It actually lights up with a little lamp. And then we have a, an assemblage jack-in-the-box piece by Gail Crum. And the last piece in the interior of the gallery is a collage by June Hund. This is a ink watercolor self-portrait by Michael McCullough. I actually met him at Studio 2091 Amy Mother's Bob Place in Cuyahoga Falls. He's one of their resident artists. The two landscape paintings next to his are done by Matthew Merchant. Then we've got two paintings by Glenn Yambor. And these were influenced when he went on a trip to Myrtle Beach, looking out the window at Myrtle Beach. Then we have a great wall by Garen Wolf. These are oil pastels on Arches paper. Garen also has a studio at Article, which is over in the Waterloo Arts District. Through the two large pieces and then the four pieces in the center. Oops, sorry, one of them's a little crooked. Um, that's part of a, a larger series, but I kind of liked it because it has little cue balls in it, little pool balls. Next we have four pieces that have been getting a lot of attention by people who walk through the hallway. This is an artist from Akron named Brett Hines. What he does is over the years is he has been going into demolished houses and taking pieces apart. So the first piece is all the decorative hardware for the doorknobs. And the second one, he incorporates photographs of the house. And those are some pieces that he salvaged from the inside of the house. And the one next to that is called Church Factory. And actually what he did is he used photographs of some churches to make it look like steeples and stained glass windows and in the background behind the glass there is a image of a church but you can barely see it. And he did this piece next to it called Chirp Chapel and what a great way to incorporate some old silverware knives into a piece and using some natural elements and twigs from his yard. We have Pool from Glenn Yambor. Then we have two pieces from uh, Randy Maxson. Randy is the gallery director over at River Gallery on the west side. And the crazy thing is this piece worked so well with the three pieces you see down below of Ken Hetzel's, how the, ver the horizontal bars and the brick pieces kind of echoed Randy's pieces. I like how sometimes it's serendipitous how the images kind of work together and there's visual threads that hold it together. Here's another painting by Joe Stavik. And next to that is everyone wants to know who Gugu Bonehead is. That's Peter Ragel. He's from Cuyahoga Falls, Akron area. I love how all the colors seem to work together and the shapes from painting to painting. It's always a fun and challenging to create a line of the show. Oil on canvas portrait landscape by Michael McCullough. Here's another Aaron Mulligan piece, Trouble and Triplicate. It's like a three-headed little bird. You know how I like these conjoined animals and people. Here we have a piece by my gallery assistant extraordinaire and my favorite videographer, Dan Simone. Next are some th are three oil and plexiglass paintings. This is my friend Betty Skufka. She's 88 years old and she paints in her studio every day. And she must paint with a brush that's got one hair because those little dots are incredible but she just gets such detail in the, and the, the flesh tones and the faces are just incredible.
next are three pieces by Bruno Cassiano. Bruno has a gallery over on the near west side on the eastern edge of the Gordon Square Arts District. Here's a wood and found object sculpture by Ken Hetzel. With the ladder kind of going up to nowhere. We have three more three pieces by Chad Cochran, and Chad is a mixed media artist that uses some some photography, some mixed media, barbed wire, recycled, repurposed family trunks. Here's another wood burn piece and using fabric dye and mixed media by Gadi Zamir. It's called How to Live with Medusa. We're gonna do a quick pan of the first room of the gallery. And as we end the video of the show, we're showing you an image called The Departure, created by Joe Stavik. Now, hopefully, that you'll this video will create interest for you to come to come to the actual exhibition. On the counter here is a binder that has the different artist statements by the artists. If you're interested in purchasing anything, you can call my office at 440-525-7029. You can email me at mherbis at lakelandcc.edu. If you can't find this information or it's not clear, you can always go to our website, lakelandcc.edu, and key in the word art gallery, and all of my contact information is there. Like I said, we have 55 artists showing over 150 pieces. I think it's a, it's a spectacular show. I'm so grateful the artists gave us great work. Thanks for coming along for the tour.